Hey, it's our 100th episode here on Bar Talk and Cocktails, The Untold Story. And I thought for such an occasion, we should do something that's uh, out of this world. Yeah, that's right. I'm shaking up cocktails on the moon. Who knew? <laughs> 1969 was an unforgettable year. I remember some remarkable things happening all over the world, like the Beatles' last live gig. 42-minute concert on the rooftop of Apple Corps headquarters in London. Later on, you had John and Yoko lying in bed, promoting peace and protesting the Vietnam War. The first bed in was at the Hilton Hotel in Amsterdam, and later the second one was held at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in Montreal, Quebec. In their suite, they wrote and recorded that song, Give Peace a Chance. And that kick drum on the recording it was actually some guy kicking the closet door with his foot. <laughs> yeah, give peace a chance. How wonderful would that be today? You had the coolest event in music history ever, Woodstock, held at Max Yazgar's uh, dairy farm in the town of Bethel outside of White Lake, New York, that attracted close to a half a million people. I was too young to migrate to the festival, but you know, over the years I watched a lot of videos and documentaries on it. Almost like being there. Well, not quite. <laughs> And of course you had the Apollo 11 space flight to the moon. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Wait, 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 that's a uh, people kind. Hi. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed the lunar module Eagle on the moon, with Michael Collins piloting the command module Columbia alone in lunar orbit waiting for those two moonwalkers to collect their moon rocks. <laughs> There's a trust exercise for you. I mean, what if Michael was a real practical joker and decided to exit stage left? I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> Those two guys would still be up here floating around <laughs> collecting their moon dust. Oh my God. You know, I hope we really did go to the moon back in 69 because I was one of the 500 million people worldwide to watch this historic event unfold. And it would be a real drag to find out that the conspiracy theory of them acting out their mission on a secret film set were true. Another person excited to watch the moon landing was bartender Joe Gilmore. He was working in the American bar at the Savoy Hotel in London at the time. As a young man back in 1940 with some basic bar skills under his belt, Joe became the Savoy's new trainee barman, an apprentice to the famous bartender Harry Craddock. By 1955, Joe was appointed head barman, a position he held up until he retired in 1976. Over the years working at the Savoy, Joe served up cocktails for a number of royalty, politicians, and a host of actors, writers, comedians, and Hollywood stars, like Joan Crawford sipping on her whiskey sour, or Laurel Hardy. They owned a copy of the celebrated Savoy cocktail book, uh, which they would bring to the bar with them, often selecting a, a white lady or a sidecar to drink. Then you got Charlie Chaplin. Well, he would come to the Savoy with his wife, but women weren't allowed in the bar in the early days, so he'd leave her at the door <laughs> while he went inside uh, to down a martini or two. Joe invented the Churchill for Sir Winston Churchill on one of his many visits to the Savoy. And did you know that Churchill actually had his own private entrance there and his own private bottle of whiskey? Another creation of Joe's was the Savoy Royale. 
dedicated to Her Majesty the Queen Mother Hello. on one of her private visits to the Savoy. And one for Prince Charles' 21st birthday, too. There was the Nixon, the Lorraine, the Link Up, uh, Berkeley Stinger, and My Fair Lady. That one was for Julie Andrews' first night in the musical My Fair Lady. And then there was the Missouri Mule, created for President Harry S. Truman and to honor Truman's home state of Missouri and the donkey mascot of his Democratic Party. There were quite a few other cocktails Joe invented for special occasions, including the Moonwalk. <laughs> to commemorate the first walk on the moon. Now, Joe never got to serve Neil Armstrong personally, but he sent the cocktail in a flask across the Atlantic to NASA, and apparently it was the first drink that the crew had after quarantine uh, when they landed back on Earth. Later, Neil Armstrong wrote a letter to Joe at the Savoy to thank him. How cool is that? <laughs> Although Joe Gilmore passed away in 2015, we can shake up his moonwalk cocktail here on the moon <laughs> to honor his memory and, and the three courageous astronauts he invented the cocktail for. Okay, everyone, do the moonwalk. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. I can't moonwalk. Oh, I think it'd be easy on the moon. Here, let me try again. Okay, I'm up here on the moon, made a special trip just for you so that we can make a moonwalk cocktail. Let's do it. All right, grab some ice. And we want one ounce of Grand Marnier. That's a wonderful, wonderful liqueur, isn't it? One ounce of grapefruit juice. Now. I already double strained this. This is fresh grapefruit juice. And you want to double strain to get all that pulp out, you know? One ounce. Hmm. Yeah. And rose water. I've got in a little dropper here, we want three drops. Beauty. Slap a lid on. Where the hell's my lid? and shake it like you're standing in front of a green screen pretending you're on the moon. <laughs> shake it warm nine! Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Now, grab our flute glass that's been chilling with ice water, get rid of that. And all we're gonna do is uh, strain it out. Oh yeah. Sweet. Now for the champagne. I mean, if you go to the moon and you come back, you gotta celebrate with champagne, right? I haven't got champagne. I just have some sparkling wine because champagne is really expensive on the moon. <laughs> I'm just gonna open this up and I don't have to worry about popping out somebody's eye, <laughs> but uh, who knows? Maybe it'll uh, hit Jupiter. Let's do it. Okay, we just want to top this up with our sparkling champagne. Well, sparkling wine. Sweet. How lovely is that? And we just want to stir it up very gentle and garnish with a little piece of orange and some fresh thyme. All right, let's check this out. <laughs> How the hell am I gonna drink this? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is delightful. You get the, the sweetness of the Grand Marnier with the sourness of the, of the grapefruit and the rose water. Well, there's a, just a hint of it in there. I mean, make one. You, it's refreshing. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna have when I get back to Earth. Ha, maybe I won't go back. Ha! Make a moonwalk cocktail. <laughs> because they're out of this world. Yeah! Mm -mm.
Cheers, baby. What's a nice gal like you doing in a void like this? You know, you look really, really familiar. Yeah, um, maybe I'm thinking like 1976, back uh, at the Sulphur Springs, one of the rippers uh, for the show. Ah! Ah! I'm on Patreon now. Yeah, for just a few dollars a month, you get access to things that nobody else sees. You get bloopers, you get uh, podcasts, newsletters, and sneak peeks. You get a whole whack of stuff that you're gonna love. So become one of my booze hounds and help support the show. This stuff gets expensive, and every little bit goes back into the show. Thanks in advance. I got my moonwalk cocktail. Just gonna get rid of that. You know, geez, how am I gonna drink that? Mm. That is so light and refreshing and uh, fruity. You're gonna love it. You should make a moonwalk cocktail. Be a moonwalker, hit the subscribe button, check some of these other videos out, and you know, maybe for our 200th episode, I'll be on Uranus. Ha! <laughs>